Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Thursday, January the 7th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise, and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God will help her when the morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. We are beginning our Old Testament reading uh, for the near future. will be from the book of Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel and Daniel are probably my favorite uh, Old Testament books. In the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was among the exiles by the Kabar Canal, the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. On the fifth day of the month, it was the fifth year of the exile of King Jehoiakim, the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the Kabar Canal, and the hand of the Lord was upon him there. As I looked, behold, a stormy wind came out of the north and a great cloud, with brightness around it, and a fire flashing forth continually, and in the midst of the fire as if it were gleaming metal. And from the midst of it came the likenesses of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had a human likeness, but each had four faces, and each of them had four wings. Their legs were straight, and the soles of their feet were like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like burnished bronze. Under their wings, on their four sides, they had human hands. And the four had their faces and their wings thus. Their wings touched one another. Each one of them went straight forward without turning as they went. As for the likeness of their faces, each had a human face. The four had the face of a lion on the right side. The four had the face of an ox on the left side. And the four had the face of an eagle. Such were their faces. And their wings were spread out above. Each creature had two wings, each of which touched the wing of another, while two covered their bodies. And each went straight forward. Wherever the spirit would go, they went without turning as they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, like the appearance of torches moving to and fro among the living creatures. And the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. And the living creatures darted to and fro, like the appearance of a flash of lightning. Over the heads of the living creatures there was the likeness of an expanse, shining like an awe-inspiring crystal, spread out above their heads. And under the expanse their wings were stretched out straight, one toward another, and each creature had two wings covering his body. And when they went, I heard the sound of their wings like the sound of many waters, like the sound of the Almighty a sound of tumult like the sound of an army. When they stood still, they let down their wings. And there came a voice from above the expanse over their heads. When they stood still, they let down their wings. And above the expanse, over their heads, there was the likeness of a throne in appearance like sapphire. And seated above the likeness of a throne was a likeness with a human appearance. And upward from what had the appearance of his waist, I saw as if it were gleaming, gleaming metal like the appearance of fire enclosed all around. And downward from what had the appearance of his waist, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire, and there was brightness around him. Like the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud on the day of rain, so is the appearance of the brightness all around. 
such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell on my face, and I heard the voice of one speaking. Our writing today is from uh, Martin Chemnitz, from his Loki Theologicae, uh, volume 2, page 501. Uh, whenever you see uh, one of the early church fathers or one of the early Lutheran fathers uh, having these books called uh, a Loki or um, Loki Theologicae or uh, Loki Communes, uh, basically means, uh, Loki, Loki means locations. And then communes means uh, like communal. Theologicae, of course, is theology. So they wrote these these books of dogmatics, basically. And what they did was they got a great big blank book, and they separated it into different sections. And in each section, they would take their notes as they read, and they would write it in the correct section. Uh, if it was about, say, the Trinity or the two natures of Christ, human and God. Uh, or about baptism or the Lord's Supper, what have you. And in each one of these common places, and there's a, a, an academic scholastic order to this, where you have the, everybody has the same topics. And you would take all these notes and you'd put them in this big blank book, which would then be yours. Uh, so basically that was their library. They could carry that around, and it had all their notes about basically everything in it. So you didn't have to carry around uh, you know, like 20 different books. Uh, when they wanted to write something, a sermon or a, or a paper or another book, they could refer to this and it would have all their notes and references in it. Uh, Martin Chemnitz wrote uh, one, so did uh, Philip Melanchthon. Uh, when you get your church newsletter, where our spotlight on Lutherans will be about Philip uh, this month. Uh, so all these guys wrote these different uh, theological commonplaces. Probably the most famous Lutheran one would be, of course, Peeper, which everybody has to study in seminary. But it all goes back to these guys in the Middle Ages that kind of started it all. And that's enough about that for now. So Martin Chemnitz says, There remains therefore the doctrine of the gospel, which instructs us concerning the twofold benefit of Christ, namely reconciliation and sanctification or renewal. It contains the promise of the remission of sins, free reconciliation, adoption, and acceptance unto eternal life for the sake of Christ the Mediator. It also contains the promise of the spirit of renewal, who works in us both to will and to do, so that after we are justified, we can also begin the new obedience. Therefore, because justifying faith seeks reconciliation with God, forgiveness of sins, adoption, and acceptance unto eternal life, it is manifest what the proper and principal object of faith is, namely the promise of grace for the sake of the mediator. In respect to this, and by laying hold on it, we are justified. These things are confirmed by sure and clear passages of Scripture, which establish that the object of justifying faith is not the word of God in general, but the promise of the benefits of Christ the Mediator. Then how many blessings come to us along with this object of our faith? Free reconciliation, remission of sins, imputation of the righteousness of Christ, free acceptance before God, adoption, freedom from the law of sin and the law, liberation from the curse of the law, propitiation for our sins, salvation, eternal life, communion with God, the inheritance of life and salvation, peace, joy, and hope of the glory of God. These are the words of Scripture. When in this way the object of justifying faith is unfolded before us, the entire matter becomes clearer. There must be a continuous progression from Sinai to Zion, so that the object of justifying faith does not become Epicureanism, or as Peter says, a cloak for maliciousness. 1 Peter 2.16 We join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As always on Thursday, our Thursday prayer uh, focuses on Christ and particularly on the Lord's Supper. O Lord Jesus Christ, true King of heaven and earth, you promised to your church that the gates of hell would not prevail against her, and you still cause your word to be preached and your holy sacraments to be administered among us. But ah, O Lord, the sins of your people obscure the majesty of your bride. Your holy vineyard is trampled and your blessed sacrifice stands neglected. Many think themselves strong and despise the life-giving food that you have ordained for your people for the forgiveness of their sins. Pardon all our arrogance and do not come to us in wrath to remove the lamp of your word from before our eyes. O Lord, we pray you, visit this vine which you once established for yourself and renew us with the sun of your mercy and the water of eternal life. Give us a great hunger for the food of your true body and blood. And let all your faithful people ever be found in the Apostles' Doctrine, in the fellowship, in the breaking of your bread, and in the prayers. We implore you, O Lord, for our altar, that it may ever be a place where the medicine of eternal life, the forgiveness of our sins, strengthens us in body and soul, that disbelief and impenitence may stay far from all who come there, so that they may not eat and drink to their own judgment. O Eternal High Priest, let the fruit of your Spirit grow in us, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and chastity. Cause us to live in holy conduct toward one another, to the glory of your holy name, here in time and hereafter in eternity. For you live and reign with the Father and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.